the day after tomorrow. We're gonna have Coms Connect 2018 taking place here at the Melbourne Convention Center. And Coms Connect is all about critical communications. When you think about critical communications, you probably think about, well, maybe this. Today we're doing a little bit of a public service activity. And we'll show you what it looks like. And now I have the tower all set up. These networks are used by first responders, including police and fire departments. Hello! This is in fact one of the loudest digital radios available on the market today. One out of 12, code 4 on the motor officer down call. And I come across this thing called Tetra Radio. Never heard of it before. And the future of critical communications is something totally different. The future more looks like this. It's one of the most vibrant industries to work in. A very interesting industry where even when we look at applications that are used by public safety agencies, these are being developed, not by a bunch of old guys. These applications are being developed by a bunch of youngsters. I want to show you a little bit of the development which is going on right now about how vibrant our industry is and how interesting our industry is. Come and join me on my trip to show you what's happening right over there. So if, if you don't know Steve Perchfield, you know him now because he's running Australia and New Zealand? Correct. That's Australia correct. and New Zealand for Motorola Solutions. Now Steve, we have in our industry a lot of people that are over the age of 50 years, right? And I know you guys have done a lot of hackathons in order to make sure that you get younger generation people into your company. So what about that? What have you exactly done to make sure that you secure the future with Motorola Solutions? Yeah, well, there's two elements actually. There's, um, there's the hackathons as a, as a platform to create excitement within the, the university sector uh, around who Motorola Solutions are, what our industry is about, particularly around that um, emergency services sector. And so what we've done uh, in Brisbane, Sydney, and Melbourne, we bring our key emergency services customers together. And what we've done in that regard is uh, they bring real operational challenges to the table. And then we have uh, allowed uh, the hackathon teams to come together over a 48 hour period to really apply their knowledge of software and application development to see what they can bring from a technology point of view to solve those real operational challenges for the emergency services sector. In the one that we did this year, a university team actually won the hackathon. We've actually employed one of the people from that team because he was so bright and that they were so successful in the impact that they had with that uh, end user agency. So it was, a, it was a great outcome. Okay, something else also happened, right, uh, after that? Yeah, and, and so uh, about five or six years ago, we, uh, we reinstated our, our graduate engineering program. And so every year we bring in five or six uh, graduate engineers into the business as permanent employees. And we've been doing that now for, as I said, five or six years. So we've, we're now up to about 30 graduates that have come into the business over that last five year period. And it's added a whole new perspective to our business. It's created uh, great uh, opportunities for these young uh, engineering students to uh, walk into their first career job. Uh, everybody said don't do it, they won't last, they'll, they'll leave. I think we've lost one out of 30 in that five year period. So it's been a fantastic success story for us and our business and for them uh, in setting them up for their careers as well. And you need these young generation people, right? That's right. And, and they've brought youth, energy, ideas, perspective that we otherwise wouldn't have seen. And honestly, it's energized that over 50s group because it's 
it's created that new level of enthusiasm that perhaps they haven't seen for a while and it creates mentoring opportunities for them which in turn also energizes them in their careers uh, at the tail end of their career. You didn't say there were so many people. <laughs> 520, it's 520 people. people. Yeah. It's amazing, is it? That's not bad for a radio industry. So the radio industry is pretty much alive, is it? Pretty much alive down under. Pretty much alive down under. On behalf of the Australian Radio Communications Industry Association, I'd like to add our welcome to the 2018 Annual Gala Dinner. Hamish, we are just having more than 500 people downstairs. That's a big success, is it, for the RCA? It is a big success. We've actually had 500 people for the last five years as part of our industry get together. So it's, it's pretty amazing that industry comes together like that and responds like it does. But it's, you know, it's a but, great crowd. But there is a vibe going on in our industry, and specifically here in Australia, is it? it, it there, there's change in the air. There's a lot of things happening, you're right. There's a, there's a vibe across the whole industry. So the economy is strong, people are investing in new technology, uh, whether it's LMR or LTO technology. There is a very strong uh, passion about technology in this country, and you can really see it tonight in the industry. You know. yeah. So um, I see younger people, because we talked about the change of the RCI yeah. and the possibility of getting more younger people into the industry who are part of the RCI. How is that going along at the moment? One thing I think we understand is that change is there, it's going to happen. We we have to change with technology as users move to different technology. We have to engage with new people, young people, different technology options because if we don't, if we just stay the same as we are, then eventually the association, there won't be an industry. Yeah. So, you know, change is constant. Um, doesn't mean to say we're going to throw out the things that we know well, but unless we engage with younger people, with software, with LTE vendors, with IoT, um, then we will become irrelevant. When did you notice this change was really necessary to, to go through? Change is happening over time, right? I mean, the, the pressure on spectrum is where it started. You know, broadband is such an important tool that started affecting everyone's spectrum. That's when change really started to, to, to arrive. But what's really going on now is as we get in these new ecosystems, as 4G is becoming more relevant, as as um, devices are becoming better and more relevant to public safety, uh, as manufacturers are putting more money into newer technologies, that's when you see real change happening. We're not seeing users, particularly public safety users, just dump their you know, PMR equipment and, and flock to LTE, but you can, they're all out there asking questions and trying to find out how it's relevant. So when your customers start asking those questions, it's time for your association to be doing the same thing. Exactly. Kadur, when we talk about changes in our industry, there's much of change going on right now. We go from the LMR industry, PMR industry, towards new broadband technologies. Very much interesting for a lot of people, a lot of end users, but we should not forget people with RF knowledge. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm also an engineer on background and I understand very well. Today, everybody is talking about the broadband and when we talk about the broadband, everybody talk about the ICT. Uh, that means more software. But at the end, there is a lot of hardware need to be done and to support the software package that can be used for whatever it is, application or LTE or broadband in the future. So the RF engineer will be always needed. If you make whatever radio, whatever uh, application that need hardware, you need always engineer behind it to do RF side. RF side means you have to take care of the frequency, you have to take care of the uh, power, you have to take care of all the uh, parameters around to make sure that your product is uh, fully compliant for the standard, but also for the environment, for the, uh, what we call, the, for example, in Europe, the CE marking. So you have to fulfill this requirement. At the end, you need the engineer in the RF, so how he can understand and can put all these components together, make sure that he has the right product and fulfill the requirement, not only the customer, but also the environment, regulatory, also the uh, uh, requirement. That is a very, very important point. We, are, we have R&D, and we have a big number of RF users, RF engineers, that are working on every single product because they are the base of 
any new product that we put on the market. Okay. Let's do that. Meet Emma. Hi. From the University of Melbourne. So let's have a short walk, okay, Emma, right? Great. Because you're one of the younger people here yes, at this uh, location, right? You're not wrong. Uh, to, between all of those old guys like me as well, um, <laughs> uh, past the age of 50. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to ask you for your age, that's, that would be very impolite. But we're walking let's around. Let's just say I'm a 20 something. That will yeah. keep it. So, 20 yeah. something. Yeah. So, we walk around this event here, right? Mm -hmm. And we see all of those companies showcasing their solutions. So, can you tell me what is something you really was excited about? Um, one of the things that is really excited me when I've been walking around is when I actually see another young person to be honest <laughs> I think that's one of the first things that I'm like oh yes there's other people here I'm who are only either one. young or female <laughs> amazing I like to see that okay <laughs> I was pretty amazed to see the um, ambassador was here um, yes so there's that really kind of high level government involvement that really interested me and I was kind of yeah excited about that especially because I've been helping out with like the social media and for me that's a really big kind of opportunity to talk about on technology. What about critical communications technology at the university? Are, is, is that a stream in the university or is that something you guys are, are promoting? Uh, definitely. So we have you know, two different research centers that are kind of working on, the, on critical communications together. So one is more about spatial data infrastructure and land administration and the other is more about disaster management and public safety. So both um, centers collaborate a lot on projects around that. I think in terms of some of the things that have really excited me to see in the the critical communication stream. Uh, hello, how's it going? Derek? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. He's always playing around. <laughs> always goofing around. Uh, um, uh, was learning a bit more about the kind of AI and VR work. And that's I think, what you yeah, guys are interested in, right? Yeah, and that's that what is young interesting people are stuff. interested in. Those really like emerging technologies, the things that you know we're kind of you know thinking about. It's great to hear that you know some of the kind of older people here who've been in the industry a really long time are starting to see the potential of those, and I think that's what really gets young people excited to see the things that you know, we're excited about starting to be talked about and adopted by people from kind of previous generations. Oh, and yeah. that is just kicking in to our industry, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just kicking in. So there are some hackathons organized by Motorola, Airbus yeah. Defense and Spaces with critical app challenges. Yeah. So that's really kicking in right now. So it's a good future for you guys, right? Yeah. And it's just, there's, we're in this sort of transition stage now from LMR to LTE yeah. and other technologies like that. So there's a lot happening. A lot of people have got opinions they want to share, a lot of information they want to share. Companies are all vying for a position to try and, uh, try and get business. Exactly. So it's a very dynamic time.